In this video, we are going to look at how one microservice can be deployed to three different options and how those options differ in behavior when the service crash. This project is available in uh, GitHub, so you can get all the source code there. And the architecture is about taking one microservice, then pushing it to Cloud Foundry, to Kubernetes, and also to OpenWhisk. There are a few requirements before you can get started. So a few CLI that you need to install. Uh, we'll make sure that you have the right version before we, can, we deploy all the services. So you need to have the BX command line installed and together with, with plugins to work with the container service and the container registry, a Docker engine to build the Docker image, and the, WISC open, the open WISC CLI too. For Kubernetes, we'll use kube control, and we'll need also a Node.js. So the first thing to get is the source code. So you can go through the manual instructions on the GitHub project, and from here you can clone the Git repository. So let's do this. We'll start by deploying the Cloud Foundry application. So here, it's just a matter of calling the bxcf push command, and it will use the manifest that has been put there, and will push the code to um, Cloud Foundry. At the end, we'll get an application deployed with a random route, and we'll uh, keep note of this route so that we can use it later. Once the app is deployed, we can test it. So we can use curl and replace the random string here with the random route that we got for our application to validate that the application is correctly deployed and return Fibonacci numbers. Here it worked. Let's move to the next one. Before we deploy to Kubernetes, we need to build the Docker image and push it to the Bluemix registry. So here I'm logging in the Bluemix registry, looking at the namespace that I have available there. I have one that I will be using. You could create your own. So let's go to the directory where the, Kubernetes, the Docker file exists. And from here, we can build the Docker image, replacing the namespace with the one I just obtained. Once the Docker image is built, we can push it to the Bluemix registry. Once the image will be built, we'll be able to deploy the service to Kubernetes. Now let's create a new Kubernetes server. If you have one, you may want to use it instead. So first I run the command to create the cluster, then I can look, look at the status to see if it's created. So it will go through requested, deploying, and finally it will be ready. Once the cluster is deployed and in a state normal, we can look at the workers to find out if they are ready to. They should be. So now that this cluster is ready, let's retrieve its configuration so that the cube control can work correctly. I'll just copy paste this line here to configure my environment. And now I can make sure that cube control is talking with uh, my cluster. So here I'm retrieving all the nodes, so there is one in the free cluster. All right, this is working. So now I can edit the Fibonacci deployment file to change the name of the namespace that is in there for the Docker image with the name of the namespace that I had retrieved previously when I worked with the Plumix container registry. So just go to this line here 
and change namespace with the name of the namespace that you add or that you created in the previous steps. Save the file and now we are ready to deploy our service to Kubernetes. A few seconds for the cluster to deploy the service. Once it's ready, you can get the IP address, the public IP address of your service, and use this call command to call the Fibonacci service, just like we did for Cloud Foundry before. This will allow us to validate that it's correctly deployed. And here we can see that it is. So finally, we can deploy our OpenWhisk action. So let's first install a few dependencies for the deployment script. run the script and now we can test the action so we can use this curl command here replacing the namespace um, with the organization and space where we have deployed the action so this should be the same as the one where we already deployed our cloud foundry application the syntax is organization name underscore space name make sure to not have any space in your uh, space name that's it, this one is working too. Now it's time to test our deployment options. So this web tester interface that you can get from the GitHub page can be used to do all this testing. We first need to register our, our endpoints. So we just type the, the location of the endpoints. There is this link, you click the link and it gets added automatically to the tester. You can do that also with the Kubernetes endpoints and with the open risk action. Now we have all three in the tester user interface. So we can start the ping loop. This will ping the user interface, the each and every endpoint every second. And we can see a green check mark when the ping is successful. So return a HTTP error code 200. So now after a few ping, we can inject a crash. So crash will just call the crash endpoint on each service. What we see here is like the Cloud Foundry app uh, just crashed and now cannot reply to any other hits. Same for Kubernetes while OpenWhisk is still running. So after a few seconds, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes will spawn a new instance of, their, of the service so that it will recover as Kubernetes just did and now Cloud Foundry. In the meantime, you see that OpenWhisk did not have this kind of a, a time that to restart the application. Let's stop this loop now. If we look at the console for the Fibonacci service uh, Cloud Foundry app, we can clearly find, yeah, here, the place where uh, we call the crash and then we got the error from uh, Cloud Foundry. I mean, our application has crashed, Cloud Foundry detects it and will spawn a new instance. So it will create a new container with our application um, and once the application is ready, this application will, st will start replying to um, our requests, just like we saw in the tester. So how do I make my service more available? So for Cloud Foundry, I can go and add a new instance to my service. So now there are two instances um, running my service. If I check the logs, I will see that a new instance has been uh, created. A similar approach can be used with Kubernetes, where I can scale the deployment to have two replicas instead of just one. Now if we go back to our tester to test the differences, so let's first start by cleaning the results and starting the ping loop again. So we get green uh, check marks here because everything is running fine. Let's put crash. And what we see here is that because we, now we have two instances for Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, the, the other instance is just answering the hits. So no more downtime and no service stay available, which is what we wanted to achieve with our new configuration. For OpenWhisk, we did not have to do any change. The platform itself will make sure that if one action fails, the next one um, is not impacted by the failure of the previous one. Thus, we did not have to configure any availability um, settings like we did with the two instances for Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry. 
With the simple Fibonacci service and the ping loop in the tester app, we highlighted one important feature of cloud platforms when it comes to ensuring the application is always running. Now, if you want to provide true high availability, you will want to look into how you can achieve um, high availability across regions or across data centers. But already looking at what how the options differ in one data center with this type of a tool is very helpful to understand the inners of the platform that you are going to use.